I grow fruit because I find the whole business fascinating. Trying to understand which is the best pruning to produce the best crop. And having seen some of the prices in the shops recently, that's an even better reason. I don't feel as if I'm eating pound notes when I pick strawberries from my own plant. Admittedly, if you've got a greenhouse, then you can extend the range, you can extend the season. But peaches in the south will grow just as well on a south wall. So will figs. And the satisfaction of looking at a tree that's in the full vigour of health or seeing a bunch of grapes swelling under your hand after you've thinned it and tended it the whole year round, and then cutting it and putting it onto the table. But the smallest plot can support some crop of fruit, can give you the intense interest that you get from producing a plate of strawberries from your own garden. Oh yes, there's more reasons than pure taste in growing your own fruit. It's the satisfaction, it's the interest, it's the growing awareness of what makes a particular fruit tree tick that makes it a hobby that grows more fascinating each year that passes, as far as I'm concerned. And I still haven't lost my taste for the fruit, either. I love the autumn. There's a tremendous sense of completeness about it. It rounds off the gardening year. And to walk through an orchard with the crop ripening up to harvest on a warm September evening is one of the richer gardening experiences. Both apples and pears will crop reasonably well in a good pollinating year, provided the blossom isn't frosted, of course. And there are some varieties that are best eaten straight off the tree well as still warm with the sun on them and there are others that you can put into store and they'll keep you in fruit from September right through until April the following year but if you haven't already got an apple or pear tree then you start by buying one from a nursery and when do you plant it any time during the dormant period it's one thing when you're gardening on your own plot you can pick exactly the right time to put the trees in I like the soil to be working easily. It's no good if when you crumb the soil up like that it sticks together. It breaks up beautifully so it gets down amongst the roots. Don't ever plant when the soil's frozen. Don't ever plant when it's very, very wet. But apart from that, for me, any time between the middle of November and the end of February does to plant fruit trees. Never leave fruit tree roots exposed. Keep them wrapped up always because they dry out very, very quickly, even in winter. And once they're dried out, then you've done damage to the tree. That's what I like to see. A root system just about as big as the branch system on top. If that is a good, strong, powerful, undamaged root system, then you're going to have no problems about establishing the tree. And even though that root system is pretty well undamaged. Always tip it back a little bit. Something I was taught many, many years ago as a garden boy. Just tip them back like that. That makes new roots form at the end of that broken root system there. You get a mass of white fibrous roots that seize straight away onto the soil. And you get the tree establishing much quicker. But that is a beautiful root. It really is. Worth every penny you pay for it to get a root system like that. There's the mark. You can see the soil stain on the stem where it was planted to in the nursery. Don't ever plant below that. Deep planting will kill a lot of trees. So always keep it either just on that mark or just below it. And the root itself should fit easily into the hole. You shouldn't have to screw all the roots up. They bed right out so each one is evenly spaced in the hole. Then get your hands. Work the soil in down amongst the roots. This tree is going to live 50 years. It's going to produce pears. Lovely, ripe, luscious pears for 50 years. It's worth taking five minutes extra, getting your hands dirty, to make certain that every root is in intimate contact with the soil. Shake it occasionally just to sift it down like that. Then firm it lightly with the feet. But keep your eye always on that soil mark on the stem. If you're in any doubt, 
pop your spade across the hole like that, that just once easing up a fraction. There's the soil mark on the stem. There's where the finished level of the soil will be. So there's no question of that being buried too deep. And that is important. Whether you're planting apples or pears or any other top fruit, the planting technique is the same. The depth of planting is the same. The care you take in soil preparation in making sure the roots are properly bedded in is exactly the same. They all have the same need. It's afterwards when you start pruning. You've got to be a little bit different, a little bit more understanding. Keep on filling the hole up, not over firming, but making sure that each layer as it goes in is pressed gently down so it's the same consistency as the soil round about that you haven't disturbed. Then the water goes where it should go, down to the roots. And if you've got your soil properly ready, there's no need to mess about with fertilizer. The tree can't need it. It doesn't use it the first year. It's the roots that are establishing into the soil you've prepared. And then after that, you start feeding. That's when it can use it, when it's got a proper root system. There's the point of grafting, there's the soil mark, and there's the finished level. After settling, that'll be just about right. Staking is something I have mixed feelings about. If a tree's got a big, heavy top on it, when it's newly planted, then you've got to stake, otherwise it rocks about, and the roots get damaged they can't establish. A head like this, I'm going to prune it and keep the balance between root and top right. No need to stake that. But if you're going to prune, there must be a reason for every cut you make. Don't do it indiscriminately because you'll do more harm than good. Starting at the bottom, get yourself a good sharp pair of secateurs. I want a clean leg. That's the bit of stem between the root and where the first branches start. So anything that looks as though it's going to interfere, trim it off as close to the stem as possible. That gives me an area there that is clear of the soil because a pear has a natural habit of growing upwards very fiercely vertically. Now, that's interesting there. You've got two very weak, whippy branches. Now, they will never get any better because of this business called terminal dominancy. The branch right at the top of the tree takes all the food, takes all the nutriment, and this one doesn't get any. It doesn't even get its fair share. Nothing I can do will push the food supply into this one to make it stronger. It always will be weak. It always will be whippy. So why keep it? Useless, a waste. So cut it out close to the stem and that one. And you can see how the basis of a branching system is there. I've got the problem of this one. Now with pitmaston, you often get this one branch going bomb away and taking all the food, snatching it, the greedy, the billy bunter of the tree. Cut it very, very lightly at the tip. If you follow the branch up, you can see really it tells you the tree itself where to prune. It starts to curl away. Take it back only a little bit, sloping cut like that to the bud there, outward spacing bud, forcing the growth out rather than in. And then this one, which is the only one that I can possibly build up to compete with this, I'm going to nick it hard. That sounds stupid. It looks even more unbalanced when I've finished. But hard pruning stimulates growth. It makes it bomb away like that. So I'm going to nick that one back to this outward facing bud there. Sloping cut again so the water is thrown off close enough to the bud, so there's no wood left above it to die back, not so close that it kills the bud. That's just about right. That'll heal over, it'll callus over. Now that tree looks odd now, but I guarantee the growth in that will be so much more vigorous. That branch there is in the wrong place. This is the center of the tree. I don't want anything to clutter the middle of the tree up. So before that gets any big ideas about being a branch on its own, cut it out. There, that's opened the center up. And I'll keep these buds rubbed out that are growing into the middle. I want to encourage the open center that enables the light and air to get in to ripen the fruit to prevent disease. And that leaves only the 
basic framework. Well, this is weak, it's whippy. I want to build up the head. The branch system I build up now is what's going to carry the crop, which is going to carry the twigs, the fruiting wood over the years to come. I want to strengthen those, so I nick it back to there. That bud will take the branch out that way, so I want another one to fill this gap in here, this empty space. So I prune to that bud there, like that. I'll get a branch there, I'll get a branch there. That is the basis laid for building up a strong, heavy cropping tree. Doesn't finish there. That's the first year's pruning. You must always watch. Each year there must be something to do with the tree, and the best time to do it is when the weather's reasonable in the dormant period, I find. And this is an established tree in the garden. Its roots have got hold. It's growing away strongly. It's what I call a happy tree. James Grieve, marvellous pollinator, good dual purpose apple. It's one that I would be prepared to plant anywhere in the country because always useful. You can cook it, you can eat it and it'll grow almost anywhere. Start at the bottom of the tree again. There's a branch. I need it. If I took that branch out there, it would leave a great gap round this side. But because I want to build it up, I want to strengthen it, I'm going to cut it back by two-thirds, like that. Now that bud will grow out, it will develop, it will fill in and take the bareness off the base of the tree. And then you come on to the main top framework. This is the important part. This is where you're going to get the open wine glass shape, the open center. There you've got two shoots rubbing together. One's got to come out, imperative. That one's no good because it's growing across. This is the one growing out and away, so right out, like that. That's a good branch now. It's funny how you see the transformation. Take that one out, you've got the weak joint again there, this weak joint, so Head it back, make it spur up. Bit of dead wood there, nip that out. And then prune your leader. Not quite so hard on this one, back only by about a third because it's a strong growing shoot. See the shape beginning to build it. Good, strong unions between the branches and the stem and an open centre. 